Good morning, and welcome to Tony Romaco Ministries. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I'd like to talk about baptism. It comes from the Greek word baptizo, meaning to dip into or emerge. And it's an important part of the Holy Trinity. As in, we all know, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, baptism alone will not bring us salvation, won't save us. Our faith in Christ goes hand in hand with baptism. It's a ceremonial cleansing. It's the removal of sin with true repentance. Now, every time we sin and we repent before the Lord, we don't have to be baptized. Once you're baptized, you're baptized not into a particular house of worship or a religion. You're baptized into Jesus. You're baptized into Christ. You're accepting Him as part of the Holy Trinity and accepting Him as the only begotten Son of the living God. Accepting Him as our Savior, as our only salvation. Accepting Him as being the truth, the life, and the way. And Jesus only got baptized, and He didn't need to be baptized because He was sinless. As God's first creation, He's sinless. He's the Son of God. He was there. He created us. He was there at the blueprints of our creation. He had a part in it. And He's totally sinless. He became baptized as a symbol of to show us and as an example that we need to repent and with baptism comes the removal of sin and by true repentance now every time we repent our sin and go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness we don't have to be baptized because once you're baptized that's it you're baptized in Christ but it's a ceremonial ritual in that you're accepting the Lord and he's cleansing you and giving you new life, new spiritual, a new soul, per se. Baptism also is a representation of showing the Lord that we have faith in him, that he's our savior. He saved us from death. Now remember when Jesus died on the cross, he conquered death. Okay. That we're not chained to death. We're not chained to the law. We're renewed in spirit. And that's a part of our faith, part of the baptism, is have faith in that. And that he came down to help us that we might be saved. And he's hoping that we'll saved by going back to him. And by being baptized, in a sense, we do that. Because we're saying, Lord, we're accepting you as the only begotten Son of God, accepting you as our Savior, that one day we might be saved and might live with you again in paradise. And he's cleansing us and giving us the opportunity to continue to do well and live his gospel, to minister his gospel, so that one day he will say, Well done, servant. You will spend eternity with me in heaven, in paradise. It allows us also, baptism, in accepting our Lord and Savior, to give us the opportunity when we do to make things right with Father God through Jesus. Remember Jesus always said, no one goes on to the Father but through me. So through Jesus, as God does everything through him, for us and for him, to glorify himself, because God is glorified when he works through Jesus, because Jesus glorifies the Father, when we are and accept Jesus in us, in our heart, in our spirit, in our soul, he radiates from us. It gives us kind of a peace, uh, kind of a glow. Some people see that glow, some don't, uh, like an aura or whatever. But that glow is not the aura per se, that glow is God. It's Jesus. That's the glow that people see, that peace, that contentment. 
and that tells people we're at peace. We've made it right with God. We need to make things right with God. Some people wait to the last minute while they're on their deathbed or laying in the street or uh, maybe shot or, or killed and all of a sudden at the last minute they're making their peace with God and that's a beautiful thing. Because when you truly repent and make your peace with God before you go into heaven, even when you make your peace with God and you're not on your deathbed, the angels rejoice. It's a, tr a sinner totally repenting the sins and that's what baptism is about we're being baptized into Christ we're accepting him he's our Lord and it's also a guide to lead us from the Holy Spirit who helps lead us along with God and Jesus to live a better life and you're going to say well you know Reverend, how do we live a better life? Well, like law of attraction, change your mind, change your life. More like attracts like, it's a law of attraction. You're going to put negative out there, that's all you're going to draw. It's like a quick example. If all you're going to think about is evil, that's what you're going to bring about. Negativity. You know, you're going to think about God. You're going to think about light, positive. You're going to think about Jesus. You're going to think about holiness. You're going to think about, you know, blessings. Then that's what you're going to attract. And blessings and miracles come in different forms. And we all know that. And that helps you with the baptism, because you're accepting Christ, that you really want to make him proud of you. Yes, Jesus is proud. We all know that pride is one of the seven deadly sins, but Jesus is proud of us because he doesn't let pride rule him. He rules pride. And he's proud of us because he loves us. That's the proud I'm talking about. He loves us. He wants us to go back to him, and he's proud that we are going back to him. His love for us and his happiness and his joy that we are going to him in all situations, and no matter what, we're relying on Him as our guide. We're relying on the Holy Spirit as He promised us when He ascended into heaven that He would send ask the Father to send us another helper. That we would be guided. He promised us that He would never leave nor forsake us as the Father had promised us that. So we, being guided in the holy direction, have three guides. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit within us, guiding us. And when we have trouble praying, it's okay. Because the Holy Spirit guides us. And this is all part of the baptism. Because we're accepting the Trinity. We're accepting Christ who always keeps His Word. Who never goes back on His Word. And if He said, even 2,000 years ago, I'm going to ask the Father to send us a helper. He sent us the helper. The Holy Spirit lives within us. It's also, baptism is important because it helps us follow Christ in that direction. Because it doesn't look good when we're baptized and we don't follow Him. It gives us a chance to follow Him. And for those that aren't baptized, it gives them the chance, the opportunity to follow Christ, to follow His lead, to live His gospel, to minister His gospel, to help others turn towards Him. That's why baptism, in a sense, is important. Now, some people don't get baptized early in life. Some do. You know, um, there are many various ways to be baptized. You can have it be simple, it can be traditional, it's all up to the individual. You can have, uh, in the Old Testament, they never really talked about, or even in the New Testament, they never really talked about pouring of the water or the anointing of the oil, you know, in the sign of the cross with uh, a prayer. They always talked about dunking or emerging, you know, uh, for example, John the Baptist would stand in the water and then he would just, you know, pick up the hands and pour the water, you know, the water over the people. But the pouring I mentioned before was like you see in the Catholic Church when you're a baby and you 
you know, the priest takes a little cup and pours the water over the fountain. Um, some people will s sit in the, uh, in the lake or a stream. Some people will stand there and, or sit and then have the person help dunk them and bring them back up again. That all depends. Also depends on the time of the year. The important thing is to be baptized. Whether you're baptized when you're a baby, like they do in certain uh, religions. Uh, some people wait till they're older when they're baptized. Some people are adults, some people are teenagers. That's not the issue. The issue is for you to truly think about it and become baptized. Become baptized in Jesus. Accept Him as the Christ, as your Savior. That's the important thing, is accepting Jesus in you. Because He's the only way to heaven. He's the only bridge that covers the gap to the Father. Just like you need a bridge to cross over, you know, an ocean or um, an ocean, or excuse me, a lake or a body of water. You know, like the Verrazano Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, um, you know, the London Bridge. You need a bridge because of our sin, and we fall short of the glory of God to get to God. That bridge is Jesus. So think about it. Become baptized. No matter who you are, what age you are, whether you're three weeks old, a week old, a day old, hundred years old, become baptized in Christ. Start following Him. Let Him lead you. Let the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, lead you on that right direction, on that narrow path through that narrow gate. Stay on that narrow path once you cross through that narrow gate. God will also send his angels to protect you and to guide you. Okay? The angels are there to guide us and to help us and to bring our message to God if we have a prayer and to bring God's message to us that he loves us and that he loves us by showing us that he, we have angels to protect us, to guide us, to help us. That's what they're there for. That's what the Holy Spirit's there for, to guide us, to help us. Baptism helps us to get closer to Jesus, to make things right with Him, and He will make things right for us with, with the Father. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you give you peace. I'm Reverend Tony. Thank you for joining me today. And please, continue to walk in the presence of God. You'll be glad you did. We'll see you again next time. Have a blessed day.